everyone so today I am going to be showing y'all all of the books that I read in November which I believe is a total of six yes yes it's a total of six total of six books and I had an okay reading month I think I have two two star books out of this so mm, I had one five star so it wasn't that bad it wasn't that bad of a reading month so I guess we will just jump right in to the books that I read. The first book that I read at the very beginning of this month was Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I actually have a book review about this book and I will link it down below for you if you wanted to watch it. So this is the newest John Green book and I absolutely loved it. Oh, I just realized I have two five star books because... I gave this book a five star as well. So yes, this was a five star read for me. I absolutely loved it. If you did not know what this book is about, we have our main character, Aza, and she has a form of OCD and it's kind of controlling her life. The story is about her trying to regulate that as well as trying to help out her best friend, maybe rekindle an old romance, and also try to find a lost billionaire for a reward. So it has romance, mystery all that kind of stuff and I absolutely loved it I connected to it on such a deep level and I loved this book so much read it please <laughs> the second book that I read this month was sublime by Christina Lauren and this is unfortunately one of my two star rated books I bought this over the summer at book outlet because I wanted to just buy a bunch of books at a cheap price and take them to college with me so it would have a bunch of materials for me to read so I wouldn't get bored by not having anything to read. So I bought basically anything that sparked my interest a little bit. And anything with romance I am a sucker for so I picked up this young adult romance book and it was kind of intriguing because from the summary or the synopsis or the inside flap of this book you read that this girl named Lucy who is supposedly like she's a dead being winds up on a boy named Collins like front doorstep kind of thing and she kind of tells him that she's come back to life for him even though they had don't know each other at all so I was very intrigued by it but I actually picked it up because one of my friends was reading it and she goes hey this is a really weird book at the moment you want to read it with me while I read it and I did and I read it in like two days and it took her like a week so she had no idea what was going on in my mind but I kept texting her oh this is weird this is weird I will say this is probably one of the weirdest books that I have read I didn't understand a bunch of it. By the end of this book, I shut I shut the book and I was like, what? I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand at all. Because it has to do with dead beings and ghosts, kind of. I'm not a big scary person. I don't like scary things. I'm not a thriller person. I know this wasn't like a scary book. It's not that. It's like a romance book with a girl coming back from the dead. Like it's not that thing. I would maybe categorize it more like zombie-like but more like ghost. It's a zombie ghost thing. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's that weird and the relationship between Colin and Lucy totally screwed my mind. Like I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. The only thing keeping me from like giving it a one star was that I was intrigued by it. I was. I was intrigued by it. But then it started getting effed up. Really effed up. I don't know what to say about this book other than the fact that I was very creeped out. And yes, I'm done with talking now. I can't anymore. <laughs> okay, the third book that I read this month was A Sweet Surrender by Lena Hart. So I read this book because I have some free time in the middle of me walking into class and my professor teaching I'm sitting in a chair not really doing anything for a while so I pull out my phone and I read one of my Kindle books that I find for free on Amazon that are maybe 30 pages long that I can just fly through and said that I read a book <laughs> and so this one was fairly short maybe 30 to 50 pages I don't remember all that much this book is set back in America basically when people were beginning to settle on America from England kind of thing and there are Native Americans in it and our main character one of our main characters Ciara I believe that's how you pronounce it it's a nickname for her 
giant Native American name that I don't want to pronounce because I have no idea how to pronounce it. So Ciara basically finds this man in the woods and he is a British sergeant and he's leading all these men and he got hurt in a bomb I want to say something like that and his name's James and she finds him basically on the brink of death in the middle of the woods and so she decides to help him and save him and he wakes up one day in the middle of a tent like far deep into the woods with this woman basically bringing him back from the dead kind of thing and sparks fly between them even though they shouldn't because she's engaged as well to a man in her tribe or the neighboring tribe I don't know it's kind of Pocahontas-esque kind of thing and I love Pocahontas so I had to read it. Overall I gave this book a three out of five stars. It was cute. Again it was a really short book. If it was a longer book and we got more in depth into their lives and everything I would have enjoyed it way more so yes. And the fourth book that I read this month was Untouched by Melody Grace. So this is another one of those free Kindle books that I was just like hey I'm bored in the middle of class when the teacher's not doing anything or before class starts and I have nothing to do so I just read a book with 20 pages. I believe this one was literally 20 pages so <laughs> I'm trash for these kinds of books as well even though this one did not reach my expectations. I gave this book a 2 out of 5 stars because I didn't really like it. It was kind of boring. Basically we have this girl named Juliet and she's like spending the summer with her family at her vacation house at this like small town by a beach don't know where I forget um and then one day she comes across this older guy named Emerson he's maybe in his mid-20s early 20s and she just got out of high school so I don't know that kind of that kind of creeped me out because I just got like I'm in the middle of my first semester of college and like thinking about starting a relationship with like a 24 year old man I couldn't do that I couldn't do that but it's okay you love who you love no matter what age I'm fine with that I understand that for me personally I was just like well you just got a high school maybe slow down a little bit <laughs> I just I didn't find it that interesting at all they basically just mean and like get together it's very insta lovey and I like insta love if it is done in the correct way this was not one of those times so unfortunately yeah I gave it a two out of five stars the next book that I read this month was my other five star read and that is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. I am absolutely obsessed with this book. I actually have the next two right here which I'm going to start very very soon. Well not very soon. I think I'm gonna wait until finals are over and that is in like a week and a half. So I have a week and a half to wait to finish the series. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. You know when I'm obsessed when all I do all day is go on Pinterest and look up fan art of them or of the characters and it's breaking my mind. Uh, it's, I'm obsessed. So if you did not know what this book is about, we have our main character, Carew. And this book is set in Prague with Carew as our main character here. And basically she goes to this art school and she has a best friend and she leads a normal life, except for other reasons she doesn't actually live a normal life. She has blue hair that actually grows blue out of her head. And turns out she has these very mystical looking sketches in her sketchbook of these creatures who are basically kind of half human half animal kind of thing but they could also be half animal and another animal and like it's weird but basically those drawings that she makes people are absolutely obsessed with them at her school and like she supposedly makes up stories about them but what if they're actually real and what if these people are real and her family she runs errands for them and they help her and basically they're her family so Carew knows absolutely nothing about who she is she doesn't know where she came from where she was born anything like that she doesn't she doesn't know who she is other than the fact that these creatures have taken her in since she was a baby and have raised her but then one day these mysterious hand prints appear on a bunch of doors around the world and 
it leads to something drastic and Karu has to deal with that and basically try and figure out for herself who she truly is without the help of her adoptive family. And also, there's a really hot angel in this book that may come as a romance person, character, thing. And I love them a lot. <laughs> One of my new favorite couples, so obsessed. And I really need to read the next books because it leaves you on a cliffhanger that you need, need to resolve. And I need to resolve it so much. So yes, please pick up the series, please. <laughs> so I can talk to someone about it. <laughs> And the last book that I read this month was The Sea King by C.L. Wilson. And this is the second book in the Weather Mages of Mistral series. Um, this is after the Winter King that I read, I believe in September or October. And I absolutely love that book. I listened to it on audiobook and I listened to this one on audiobook as well. And the narrator is so good. I highly recommend the narrator. I believe she's the same for both books. But these audiobooks are really long. This audiobook is 20 hours. This book takes place right after the Winter King and it has to do with the side characters of the characters in the Winter King. So there was this prince who has sea powers and he helped save the land that the Winter King was trying to save and so he is the new main character in this book. And the other main character is one of the sisters to the woman main character in the first book and her name's Summer. That's her like nickname and her real name is Gabriella. These women in this family of all four sisters I believe all have like weather powers. There's spring, summer, autumn, and then there's Kestrel. That was the main character in the first book and she had storm powers. But this one we're following Summer and she has summer powers like the sun and everything but she also has powers that no one knows about because she's never told anyone besides her dead mother. She tries so hard to keep them secret because if anyone knew what she had, she would either be taken or she could hurt a bunch of people. So she has suppressed that kind of magic ever since she was a kid. Basically this prince of the sea meets her because since he saved the Winter King's land, he was given the option of courting three of the sisters that are not that are not already married and basically choosing one to be his wife if they agree. And so he meets Summer and things spiral from there. This book was very complicated. <laughs> I loved it though. I love this series. And I think the reason why I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars instead of a full 5 was because there are some instances in this book that have to do with rape. I don't like reading about that. I actually had to skip through a chunk of the book because I can't take reading or listening to any of that. I can't, I can't do it. I can't, I can't read that stuff. So that's why I gave it a 4.5 stars. I loved it though. And the rape has nothing to do with the two characters, by the way. It's not them. Like one of them is the main character, but it's not between them two. Like, you know what I mean? Like she got kidnapped kind of thing. Like it's in the synopsis that the three sisters get kidnapped and basically the kidnappers do horrible things to these girls. Dillis, the main character, man goes out and tries to save them. So it was good. I loved the beginning way more because we didn't have the rapey parts. Yeah, I'm not a big person of reading about that. I bet a bunch of you feel the same maybe. I'm not sure. I just can't stomach reading it. So I don't. <laughs> that and miscarriages. I just can't read about it. Because I would never want any of those things to happen to me. Ne no, I couldn't. I can't read about that. So that's why I had to deduct a 0.5 stars just because I didn't read the full entire book. I had to skip some of it but I loved it nonetheless and I totally recommend this series as a whole. I don't even know when the next one's gonna come out. I believe there was a six year gap in between these two books but I didn't get to them till this year because I didn't know about them. So 
I don't even know when the next one's gonna be so there you have it those are all of the books that I read in the month of November I hope you all enjoyed please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you're planning to I would love to talk to you about them anyways I hope to see y'all soon with a new video thanks for watching bye